Welcome back students. This is Mr. Bruin. Today we're talking about environmental portraits. This is a really interesting type of portraiture. Let's begin with an example here. Let's all take a look at it. What can you tell me about this man from his environment? Think about it for a second. If I were to answer that question, I'd say, well, standing in front of a taxi with that kind of hat on, looks like a taxi driver. I look at the buildings surrounding him and those trees in the background that look like palm trees and I think this looks like a tropical environment somewhere south. Um, I see that the words taxi time are written in English so I'm assuming that this is an English speaking environment or country. So English speaking tropical area probably the southern United States, Florida, California, something like that. So already, just from taking a few moments just to study the picture, I, I've learned a lot about this man. Most likely his employment is as a taxi driver living in a, probably in the southern United States, Florida, something like that. So let's move on. What is an environmental portrait? Well, simply it's a photo taken where people work, rest, or play. Its benefits are that it gives insight into the person, a little bit about who they are. We can tell this woman is probably a nurse. By taking a portrait in a person's work or rest or home environment, it helps your subject relax. A lot of times people are very nervous when they get their portrait taken, so by putting them in their own environment it can really help. So how do you begin to take a good environmental portrait? Here's another example, a man at work. First of all, get to know your subject. What are they interested in? Because your environment that you place them in should reflect their interests and the things they like to do. Once you know that, select a location. Try to find one that's interesting, colorful. However, you have to be careful that your background and the environment doesn't distract. It can't be too busy. You may want to find some props that the person can use, hold, or be next to, like the cheese in this picture. It tells us that this man probably sells cheese for a living. Those props, of course, should be subtle, once again, so that they don't distract. A lot of people ask the question, should I pose my subject? Well, quite often you do pose them. You put them where you want to in the picture uh, to get the right look. However, you're still trying to create a candid look. A candid look means natural, uh, not like they're posed. So it's kind of like you pose them, but you try to pretend like you're not posing them. It can be a little tricky. You'll get the hang of it. Okay, let's just take a look at some environmental portraits. Here's a great example of a young soccer player. You can see uh, that there's background included. We know that she's a soccer player because of the net, the goal, her uniform, and the ball. One thing I want to point out here down below, you can see one of the techniques used is to create a sharp background. Remember in traditional portrait photography, we usually had a blurry background. That's not, that's not the case in environmental portraiture. You want to have a sharp background because that background is an important part of the picture telling the story about the person. Here's another environmental portrait, young man at study. Here I want to point out the use of props. We've got a book, a lamp, things like that. It shows again, once, once again, uh, the context which is uh, study. Um, doing homework, that kind of thing. And so props are an important part. However, we have a lot of props in this picture. and This isn't necessarily the best example of environmental portrait. I use this one to show you how props can, and background can get out of hand. You want to avoid overly distracting backgrounds because they pull away from the uh, subject matter, which is your person. So you have to be careful about props and backgrounds. Let's take a look at this one in contrast to the previous one. It's a similar portrait, two men in their work environment. But this one I think is less distracting. The background isn't quite as overwhelming. And I think the reason for that is the use of light. The light is focused right on the man and much of the rest of the portrait, except for the things right behind him, are pretty dark. Go back here to this man. See how the lighting in uh, the entire picture is pretty much the same. All the objects in the picture are lighted equally. Um, whereas in this one, the man especially is lit much more uh, brightly than the rest of the surrounding. And that's why the background is not as distracting in this picture. All right, the next one. Uh, not only can you use light to focus attention on your subject, but you can also use color to focus attention. I think the one reason this man doesn't um, get distracted by the background is the fact that the color of his clothes and all is darker than the rest of the portrait. Most of the rest of the portrait is pretty light, white, uh, beige, off-white, and the light blue sky, whereas he's wearing black and gray, and these colors are darker than the rest of the picture. And so just like in the previous one where light was used to focus attention here, color is being used to focus attention. Another 
important technique? Have fun. This is just a fun, quirky picture of uh, a portrait of the photographer. And you might try to do something like that as well. And then here we have uh, the use of black and white. Sometimes uh, color can actually be distracting if there's too much color in the picture. So this person chose to take the picture using only uh, black and white, which tends to focus it, uh, the attention just on the man here. All right, so the primary techniques of environmental portraiture are you need to include background that tells the story of the person, tells about who they are, and possibly some props. That background should be in sharp focus. Contrary to the technique we used in traditional portraiture, here the background should be sharply focused so that you can see it. And then thirdly, try to use light and or color in the portrait to focus attention on the main subject matter, which is the person. Okay, And try to avoid distracting, cluttered backgrounds. Okay, that's it for this lesson. Uh, your lab is to go out and take a bunch of environmental portraits and post them into Moodle so we can take a look at your work. Talk to you later.